All right, uh, let's get started today. Um, thank you everyone for joining me today. It was really a close call. I might not have streamed today because I was doing a crap a ton of yard work and that really takes it out of you. But I kept it low profile for the rest of the day so that I had energy mustered up for this one hour explosion of art. Um, so before I get started on that, uh, a couple of announcements, really, really important stuff. Please don't skip through announcements because it's it's how this community works. You know, if you want to see your work on my video, um, watch how to submit. <laughs> Go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon to join. Um, really important that you submit your work here because I accept work from nowhere else. Where is it? Why? Why am I so confused? I accept work uh, from nowhere else. I don't accept work um, through Facebook through Instagram. I do not provide written critiques through Facebook or Instagram, so please don't uh, put me in a position where I'm guilt-tripped into giving you one, because you know I'll write up something for you, and I try not to send anyone from my door, because uh, I feel like an evil, um, that dude from Christmas Tale, what's his name? Uh, so I feel really, I feel like a grouch, um, so I try to do that, but please stop asking me to give you guys critiques through Instagram or Facebook. Just come to the critique hour, come to Reddit. Not only will I actually give you a po possibly give you a full critique, um, but you will get tons of them from the community. Um, and you only benefit, you only improve. One of the biggest and most important factors of you know why your drawings suck, the video that started it all, not really started it all, but round rounded up all of you here is that you guys need an art community. If you don't have an art community, you're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> so please make sure you guys have one. Um, another announcement is that the community will host a challenge very soon, a cool design challenge. Crap, man, we used to do so many challenges. We did all kinds of character design challenges, uh, character design lineups, illustrations. We usually do a ton of them during that incubation period that is the winter. Um, it's good and bad for artists, but uh, something about it makes us all want to stay indoors to a lit candle with the blue cold outside and just drawing away. So I will host some th fall theme challenges like I did last year with very specific color um, restrictions like we did last year for the Harvest Goddess character design challenge. Um, but for, um, for now, there is one little challenge I want to send out to you guys that was sent to the uh, to the uh, patrons already that the patrons have already completed. It's a book cover design challenge, uh, the narrative written by myself. Um, so I will try to sub submit that for you guys. It's going to be a little bit tailored so that it's for a larger audience. Um, and if you guys want to become patrons, you can become patrons on Patreon. You can join as a dollar. If everybody here joined as a dollar, I really wouldn't need to worry about ads or ad restrictions or all that crap with YouTube changing or marketing or anything like that. We can stay an independent channel. If everybody joined for a dollar as a watcher, really wouldn't need to ever ask for Patreon ever again. But if you guys want to join as patrons and provide some support for the community and for the community's posterity and longevity, you may do so through Patreon. Um, and then Portrait Studio is still on sale if anyone's interested in that. All right, I try to get through those quickly because I know some of you hate that crap. Um, but uh, there's people who message me on Facebook who want to become uh, patrons and they're not sure how, they're not sure how to give back to the community. Patreon's always an option. Thank you mods for your presence. Let's get started. Um, so this piece has got a lot of problems with it. Um, tons. And uh, the pose is great, but the expression is so corny. Uh, corny because you've used all of your, all the tools in your itinerary. Um, in your in your armory, you know, whatever it's called. What is it called? The tools in your arsenal. You've given us the... Let me show you why it's corny. Every single expression sources from an emoji. Alright, emojis are a big deal because they're universal. If you're not sure about emotion, expression, and cinematics, read Scott McCloud's... Um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> I forgot the name of his book, but Scott McCloud, something something comics, the history of comic books. I don't know what it's called. Lighthouse. I feel like you know what it is. Um, all about comics, uh, comic books. What is it? It's something about 
uh, much ado about comics. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> but uh, but Scott McCloud, look it up. He really goes into the universal expression and how to use it um, to pull off a really cool read. But this, making comics, is it? Is it making comics? Um, yeah, so right here uh, we have, <clears throat> let's make an emoji equivalent of her face. Okay. At any point, if you have a character that reads like this, it's corny. This is the kind of stuff. If you guys, feel, you know, if you if you look a little closely, it kind of looks like one of the Harry Potter classic Harry Potter book covers. Do you guys remember those? Kind of for children's books, kind of for children's novel. Um, not even young adult, I would say novels. It would just be you know children's comics. Um, so the reason why it's corny is not because it's an expression that's corny and that alone is because you've given us a bust. You've given this, you've put this on this, right? It looks like really, really corny, bad acting, right? So she looks like a bad actor. Um, and then you've covered her in blood, which is even cornier. So how do we fix this? Um, there's a lot of ways to fix this. Uh, we can start off with the expression. We can start with the lighting to help us guide uh, the expression. That's a big deal. That's a very, very big reverse engineering. So almost always when I diagnose, so the, diagno the diagnosis was that it was corny expression. As a student, you're like, okay, let me fix the expression. How are you going to know what expression to, to apply if you don't know the mood? Now you've given us a lot of hints at, at the mood, but you haven't, there's, it isn't high fidelity to the light. You haven't respected the light at all. So how do we know what mood? So the most, to think, well, to think like a professional is to adjust the mood first. And the mood is the light. Write that back to me. So that's the lesson of the day is that the expression is governed by the environment. The actor acts per the environment. The environment is what the writer or the writer of the script or the show uh, showrunner decided that, you know, this is going to be the room we film this scene in and the lighting experts are going to set up the light and this is how the actor adjusts their rehearsal to the room. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to adapt to the environment. So then how do we fix it? So we're going to start off by respecting the light a little bit more and the best way to do that is with darkened layer. Darkened layer has been our, our little mascot lately, right? Let's darken the room. Darken the character. And you guys know what's next. Come on, all you Sabrac fans. You guys know what's next, right? What's next? Anyone guide? I mean, you guys you guys can critique as much as I can. Because you guys pretty much know what's next. So what's next? <coughs> Add the light. Erasing from that layer, lighthouse, ding, 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 ding. Yes, erasing from that layer, so. See, you guys can repeat all of these changes. All right. So we're going to erase everything that is not the girl. Everything. All right. Not everything. <laughs> so I could just said everything. All right, not everything. Um basically anything that silhouettes the light is going to be kept as blue darkened and we chose one color to darken with because we were unifying the light environment so as we're deleting we see a nighttime color which is not good what you're doing is that you're basically telling us the the moon, the moon light is so dim and so unpresent that it's, 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 it's pure blue, it's pure navy blue in the direct vicinity of the moon, which is not possible. It's actually pretty light. So we need more of an eclipsing in the shadows here. Let me turn that off for a second. See how corny it was before. All right, and I'm just um, completing this silhouette a little bit. Let's see. 
closer we get to the moon, the more silhouette we have. So we've cleaned that up. Now we know what the mood is. Now we understand you know, what, what's going on in the environment. She's in a dark room. The silhouette is behind her. And she's got this very, very strong sexual presence. It's like a pinup, so it's a femme fatale. So we need to outline her pinup. We can't lose the silhouette in this super, super, um, you know, a, a dim room. If you're going to choose a silhouette, you kind of have to cheat with the light a little bit. And you are allowed to use daytime exposure on a nighttime scene in a painting. All right. I sh if you guys follow me on Instagram, I usually when I find paintings like that, I'll, I'll share them on my story. That's 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 why I'm saying like I'm gonna be a little bit more active on Instagram, just because that's where you find all the paintings that I try to remember in critique hour and forget. So I'm just going to just allow some of that here. Just bleed over. Okay, and then we've got her colors, so I'm going to not only use a darkened layer, but a color layer, or a color mode, on her to unify her light environment as the shadowed object. So I'm going to get that blue, and just use it on her. So what else entails the lighting? Um, we've got, actually, we have a whole section here of hair. So subsurface scattering, any transparencies or degrees of transparency need to be adjusted. And then a secondary light source, which we will probably bring in at a later time. So we've got two major transparent, transparent bodies of texture. We've got a hair. Remember, I told you guys before, be careful with dodge tool. So I'm using, I'm going to be using dodge tool on midtones or highlights because it does the job quickly, but be careful with it. So I made a new layer, and I'm going to decide where the hair clumps layer. Sorry, it's idiots outside with their bikes. God, always interrupts me. I made a new layer, and I'm deleting it my layer to show where the where the moonlight comes through her hair. And I'm deleting closer to the head because that's where all the hair meets and becomes thicker, blocking more light. I'm going to bring in that subsurface scattering like rim lighting and rim lighting it's not a phenomenon it's just you just angle the camera so there's an outline if you angle the camera anymore you'd eventually see that one whole half of the object is illuminated so if we if we took a picture from her side we'd see half her hair in the back full of light oh so I'm not using dodge tool right now but it still works <laughs> it's just the moonlight color I'll use the dodge tool for larger sections. Alright, so we're just showing how, remember I'm deleting away in a second, we're just showing how her head is kind of casting a shadow on her hair. Do you get what I'm saying? And so I'm deleting where we have the centermost. See that? So now, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely using dodge tool now. We're just deleting away. And in a second, I'm going to do the same thing, but for her shirt, because if you've noticed, she's wearing a see-through shirt. Some light will go through that see-through, catch the fabric, but stop at the arm, which is going to look really, really cool. And if you've ever been mesmerized by those league splashes, you wonder how they're pulled off, how they look that good. It's basically the lighting. They put the mood first. Mood first always. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm just do doing the same trick again. Editing, going back. And then just deleting at where I feel there would be a shadow. So just where her hair just denies a little bit of light. And then where we have the thicker clumps of hair. So we're indirectly painting the moonlight. Alright, and then the lower we go 
the more the moonlight shines through her hair. And her hair is fair because it's purple, so we would consider it fair, to the lighter, on the lighter spectrum. But even if you had brown hair, you'd get that little see-through x-ray of light. So now I'm going to use the darken, I mean the, sorry, the, the highlights. And I'm going to just, wherever the, the moon is brightest, that's a lot, that's a fuckload. Um, so wherever the moon is brightest is where we're going to have a higher magnitude of, of subsurface scattering. And this is where you can have fun because in hair or any other subsurface scattering that happens on an object, we have saturation. So do you guys remember in that video I said subsurface scattering is twofold, saturation and illumination. So you can get the sponge tool on saturate. So remember those colors that we dimmed with purple and darken and, and color mode? We lost a lot of vibrance and a student, and a noob, forgive the term, will just throw vibrance everywhere. We saw that last class. I mean that was a crazy environment exposure for a dark woodland scene. That was un un unnecessary and physically impossible. You have to be selective about your saturation. So wherever the rule is for subsurface, so let me go backward is wherever we have a shadow still and we have light still kind of piercing through we will have a little body of saturation in there and we can't really push the saturation far if we haven't pushed the illumination far it's hand in hand All right, these are some big fundamental terms that we're using today so the moon isn't as white as it can be and you can go whiter if you, if you feel inclined to so I'm going to take this all the way back before I started using Dodge Tool, back in the history. So if you don't have your history set at a thousand, you're really missing out on this technique, especially if you're editing existing paintings. So, yep, so it's right here, paste, and you can just see the difference in hair structure and hair volume. And we're not even done the, the, um, the silhouette yet, and we're not even done all the texture changes for the silhouette and we're not done the expression so you know this is how powerful mood is in an illustration you really have to take your time it's mood first always because how else are you going to do this so um, I'm not sure what this layer was there was nothing happening here so uh, so what I'm gonna do now is just do a little bit more highlights here before I commit to any other changes. And then over here, it seems a bit boring, so I'm just going to use a large brush. Always use large thick brushes for bodies of hair. Never, never ever do this. This is stupid. Okay? It's stupid because it's, it's irrational to think that drawing many small strokes of hair will result in hair. <laughs> That's not how the human eye works, so don't do it, and you guys know better. All right, so we're just gonna do just general brush strokes to, to 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 hint at the illusion of the texture, not the actual texture. It's I mean it's it's not stupid because an irrational thinking primate <laughs> like us, like an ape, will think that okay if I draw every single little hair, I'm gonna get hair. Um, no, that's not how it works, unfortunately. So you can't do that. You have to create the illusion of the texture, meaning what we would see if we had chosen a periphery. All right, so we're not done yet. We're not done all the vibrance yet, but let's have a little bit of fun with the arm. To pull off the arm is very easy. We have to decide where the arm is. The arm actually is under all the fabric. And then go back and find the fabric itself. Find where the arm is like pushed tightly. So I would say the arm and shoulder is tight against the fabric, but wherever we have recesses and muscle is kind of where we're getting a relief in the fabric. Okay, and then we're going to, uh, because we want to keep edges clean. Oh my god. Did you guys hear that? Fucking country folk. <laughs> Fucking country folk. Okay, um, so I'm just cleaning up just outside that edge. And then we're going to select inverse back to that little bit we chose. You can pull this off with Dodge Tool on mid-tones. Remember, please explore Dodge Tool settings. Don't always use it on highlights. Just like that. Okay, so now we have this nice little addition. 
I'm going to select only this little bit that I added, go back to before I painted it and paste it so that I can one, blur it because it's still just fabric, it shouldn't be that sharp a detail, and two, cast the shadows of nearby objects on top of it because every little chunk of hair is going to stand in the way of that illumination in the fabric. And then the fabric itself doesn't just sit as an outline, it kind of outlines, as a flat object, it kind of outlines the, I'm going to merge it down now, it kind of bleeds into the silhouette a little bit sometimes. There's a lot of guesswork here, and there's, there's no right answer on how to perfect this or how to do it exactly. That cast shadows in the wrong direction completely. My bad. Okay, just a couple little textural changes and then we'll move on. And then this little section here may ripple with the fold. It's just enough that we show the arm underneath. And you've got just too many you're jumping around between black and, and light values. It, the most classy thing to do is just unify your colors as one chunk of value so that you're not trying to bring in the volume of, of highlight exposure on an area that is generally just unified by one simple shadow color. This whole, this whole section is just one simple sh shadow color and that's it. And you've tried to do a hundred things with it that we can only really have in light. So I'm going back and um, just finding any more where we have that little light push. And then just cleaning up my cast shadows. They shouldn't be that strong, but it's something else to add to the painting. A little bit more flesh. So I'll look at the questions in a second. And we're going to do the same thing, but on a much smaller scale on this side. And you've got some kind of outline here. Again, too messy. All right, just slight little brush strokes, really, really quick stuff. We don't have any fabric where her corset is, so why would we have any illumination there? And we'll, we'll adjust as we go all of that uh, background business. Now... All of that was just uh, mood, okay? Um, what's next is a great deal of expression and portraiture talk, so prepare. All right, so um, a couple of illuminations here on her arm, on her hand, I mean. Just simple stuff. Her hand is, her finger is definitely getting a little bit of light, but I might adjust it anyway. I'm gonna just extend her nail out just a little bit. Okay, so we have this expression that's hella corny, and we want to adjust it. When I'm talking, like let's say I was this this succubus. <laughs> Okay, maybe I shouldn't say that. Let's let's say we were her. We were collectively as a as a as a as a force, um, this girl right here. How would we feel about ourselves? What's our self esteem like? Pretty fucking cocky, right? Uh, it's pretty much close to my personality. So what we want to do is adjust her expression and adjust her body language so that she's expressing that, but still cater to the environment and mood that we just developed. So if I was a cocky girl. I'm going to lift my head up. Okay, and that means my ear is going down. All right. So it's going to get pretty messy pretty fast, and I'm trying to, uh, to not allow that to happen. So we have more chin, less forehead. So we've generally, generally made that adjustment. Her torso near the floor seems oddly cropped. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best crop, but let's think splash. Let's think league splash, horizontal uh, UI. So, um, right, so. First thing I'm going to change is her expression in her mouth because half of her looking like a, like a minion 
is what she does with her mouth because it just feels a little bit um, in, in, less in control when your mouth is closed, when you're smiling less, generally by the rules of like comic books and anime, you're the bad guy in control. But as soon as you like start doing silly expressions, you're no longer this bad guy, you're like a silly comic relief character. Um, so you're kind of taking away her dignity, let's say, as a villain. I'm going to also adjust her eyebrows in a second and then the squint in her eyes and if you remember back to that scene in Cinderella when the evil stepmother is closing the door and her eyes are like glowing do you guys remember that what color was that that was like almost a pukey yellow kind of an eerie green remember bad guy green we've talked about that a lot already so that's what I'm gonna try to do I'm gonna actually completely erase the eyebrows you painted because there's they're really offering us nothing an expression, the powerhouse of expression is in the eyebrows. So write that back. Um, expression is what we're covering this month in the Patreon apprenticeship. So if you guys want to catch that, perfect your expressions, head over to Patreon. So I'm getting rid of them. Completely waxed her eyebrows. And I'm also going to, before I apply the eyebrows, I'm going to just squint those eyes another thing that made her and if she's playful you could have done playful while still keeping her personality intact it feels like you change the character for the sake of playful if we're talking about a girl who's a seasoned veteran in seducing men and drinking their blood I really wouldn't see her as a big clown she wouldn't be doing clown expressions she has that evil femme fatale uh, sleepy bedroom eye right but squinting is, is in two ways. You can squint with the lower eyelids as well. All right. I'm going to select, oops, I'm going to select the lower parts here <clears throat> and raise them up, push them up. And you see how we made her playful again? just by squinting her eyes. And each eyelid will be adjusted accordingly, and I we can't do one uniform move, movement in this perspective. But to give her a little bit of madness, you can make one eye squint a little bit more. So there's a lot of ways that, and a lot of intricacies and a lot of fun ways that you could be um, completing the same expression, you know, without being corny. I'm careful with that waterline. What is with the waterline and you guys? What are you guys doing with your waterlines? You guys make them like they're they're like LED light strips. <laughs> you guys don't even like you guys think that it's gonna save your painting to throw a strip of waterline on. It's not. It's not gonna do shit for you if you're not fucking following the anatomy of of uh, of what's going on in the um you know the structure of the eye. If the light is not hitting the water line, there will be no water line. It's too dark. And then you distorted her face. This practically is a clown with all this makeup on, blood on her face. You can do a lot more with a really, really classy splatter of blood. And we'll talk about any more detail in the lighting after I finish the majority of the expression. Just, uh... Like, what is this big white splotch? I don't know if that's for the sake of the character. If it is, you can apply it later. I'm just going to get rid of it right now. There's a lot more to do with the mouth as well, so I don't want it to be that open. I want less teeth to show. And when it comes to vampires, you guys always show so much of the upper teeth that it looks like every vampire has an overbite, even in movies nowadays. I'm going to show that little dimple in the smile, which kind of moves the entire cheek. And then finally, from a distance, I will start applying. And you got this weird setup with the eye socket. We need to fix that. Start doing the eyebrows. I'm just going to use a sketching brush. So there's a lot you can do right now. You're the one who knows her personality. I'm going to apply what I feel is playful and evil at the same time. 
just to honor whatever the heck it is you were trying to do with that corny expression at the start. And I really want to push that perspective a little bit further, so I'll try to see what else Liquify can offer us. You know, it doesn't have to be both eyebrows mad, it doesn't have to be both eyebrows raised. The eyebrows can be generally um, darker, uh, lower, sorry. Um, we have a general darkening of the face so that we can decide which planes are the most important. And look what I'm doing. I'm darkening her forehead a bit more and then I'll continue to lightly darken the rest of her face. Okay, because we have a very important thing coming up, which is the actual light source of the scene, not the secondary, not the, it's the actual environmental light source. And I'm piling it up on the side of the face that is most likely to be exposed to it with a nearby reflector or some kind of light doesn't bend, it travels in straight lines, but maybe any any bleed through. So now I'm unifying the face's light environment. Get it? Is that an epiphany moment? Anyone had an epiphany? Okay. Okay, so we're just deciding where the light can come in. So the hair will cast a shadow in this general section. The sockets will turn away from the light in this general area. There's recess, so they're not catching any light apart from the bridge of the nose that emerges. All right, we have the nostril that is blocking light. Okay, and then we have <clears throat> Succubus anatomy is important. <laughs> Questions asked. And then we have this little uh, cylindrical impression of the lip in this perspective. I want to just exaggerate that squint in the eyes. Remember, a purple and yellow are combating each other, so com complement each other. So we want to. That's too much, I understand, but I'm going to delete away at it because I want degrees moving across the face. So we're going to slide off just a little bit, keeping the nose, that little nose silhouette area exposed. And then I'm going to just cast this shadow right here up the finger and the rest of the hand. So I just played, uh, you know, by ear and, and threw in the, the light where I wanted it to be and then allowed the cast shadow to erase wherever it wasn't supposed to. I didn't try to do everything at once. Everything happens in layers. Even the professionals work like this. They just, you know, one problem at a time and art is just problem solving. Maybe a little light will sneak through this way on the chin. Bring that down. And then there's going to be maybe this little secondary light that we'll introduce later. But at this point, what I'm going to try to decide is what's happening. Oh, damn, you guys saw the before. Um, <laughs> I didn't want you guys to see it. But uh, but I wanted to generally... Um, oh, okay, there it goes again. <laughs> So I just wanted to uh, clean this up a little because I don't want to push it maxed out too early. So I'm going to put these little highlighted tip of her nose, all that fun shit. So I'm going to get a, I don't know what layer it's going to end up being on, but I'm going to decide on based off the red, orangey blue glow in her eyes. It's red, but I want to show you how cool orange would look first uh, and yellow in this light environment. It's like almost cat eye squint. And that's part of her playfulness. You know that that kind of cat eye anime character? It's like, I don't know how to, you know, that? That's kind of what I'm trying to 
show you guys. I remember that that evil stepmother moment, and um, if anybody can find that for me, oh, I'll find it. Cinderella, evil mom, Disney. All right, so image. Where is that scene when she? I think it's this scene. She slowly starts. Hey, there we go. See that? Fucking love that. Stuck with me since childhood. It is. And look at that green. Is that not the same green they used on Hades? Right? Um, oh, wait. It's not Hades. <laughs> who is it? I mean, they used it on one guy. Who is it that they used it on? It's not Hades. It's someone who looks like Ursula, I think. Ursula Disney. There's just some magic scene she does with green. I swear to God. <laughs> that purple ops absolutely is an evil magical color. Um... Where is it? Somebody fucking help me out. Magic cauldron. There's a lot of there's a lot of evil. I think yeah, you're right. It's Maleficent, and they use the same scene. Uh, yeah, there we go. And they use the same scene with her eyes. Maleficent, evil. What's his name? They use the same scene when she goes dark. You know, she closes her eyes slightly. Maybe it's the scene when um, when the girl is in the room when she finally touches the spindle needle and she's like lurking in the shadows. So that's kind of what we're trying to pull off here. Damn, do I even know my Disney characters? I know that there's a scene with green magic. I definitely looked it up for our villain challenge, so I know 100% Hades is in there for the villain challenge. It was probably his dark circles. Okay lost all credibility. Disney anyway, but I never said I was a Disney authority. Okay, and so we're gonna get the black and reapply her eyeliner. Really important here. So see how she's playful, but still her occupation. All right. And then still anatomically correct and not corny expression. I'll just merge that down. Get some of that highlight. There's a lot of ways to pull off the uh, and I'm gonna get burn and just use it on the pupils and the iris just to save some time. I guess this layer works, this layer mode works just fine. And then I'll dodge through that darken, oh, dodge on highlights, just so that I can get the glowy magical uh, magnitude in the light. Try to unify the makeup a little bit just by using the same makeup and just like I said the, the villain that whole villain anatomy which is the dark circles under really helps make her feel more evil so more eyeshadow basically and then basic eye anatomy which just entails that upper eyelid is illuminated also that that um, Jessica Rabbit makeup where you just have a lot of upper eyelid shimmer on that I'll probably have to re-darken it too because it's exiting the, the light environment of the face. And a little bit of rim light shines through her hair and catches her forehead, which is important for just showing off some structure so that it's not a blob person. And I'll probably re-darken a little bit more as well. Okay, and then we can do so much more now just to clean up. So I'm going to use lighten mode just to clean up some stuff out here because there's too many splotches of just non non stuff. And for a girl who's supposed to be, you know, still an object of beauty, that's the kind of that's the problem that you guys face sometimes when you paint characters that are evil. You still have to blend out the girls. You still have to make it look like it's female anatomy. You still have to make it look appropriate. Don't over texture the hair everywhere. It's texture, re uh, it's you know, detail relief, detail relief. 
also going to soften the hair a little bit up here. I'm just cleaning up in general. And on the body anatomy, should not be this exposed. So, darken. Using that same darken blue. Nope, oh, I'm going to put it on darken layer. Basically, the trunk of the body is darker. And then, using color, I'm just going to unify the colors again. So I'm going to do some sweeping changes soon. These are the ones that I delayed when I when I did some light stuff early, just because I didn't want to use my whitest whites yet. There's also some qualifying um, boobage that is needed, just because that's really what pinups are all about. And I'm just going to pile up a value over here and just let some of it catch the light, even if it's under her... Uh, her shirt should catch a little bit of light. Just wherever her, you know, the, the, the edge of the breast is catching some of that ambient light from the side. It's not in this much though. And it will be blurred. If I could get this friggin' edge to cooperate. <clears throat> it's the slightest little motion, but it does enough. And it's just under, and it's blurred. Just to have some kind of surface change in there. I still think the hair is just a little bit dark still, so we're losing a lot of the face. And I'm going to try to find, maybe apply a longer you know, almost inhumanly long fingers just to make her look more like an animal. You know, that non-human thing. Just showing how the light gets through the hair. And then uh, correcting the chin and we're almost done. Of course, uh, there's still that overarching light change the extremities and it's kind of difficult to tell what your ambient secondary light is where it's coming from um, but let's find the chin shadow so you're saying it's from up here actually I'll just darken it And then, um, you know, we're losing a lot on the completion of her arc and her eyebrow by having the hair drop so low. So, you know, there's a lot you can do with the eyebrow if it's fully visible, you see? So if we, because the eyebrow carries so much of the expression, so what we can do is just paint the eyebrow in, allow her eye light, eyeliner wing to also show, because that's know that cat eye femme fatale makeup again just allow most of this shit to be visible so that you know and we can just put like little wisps of the bang so that we still have the same design on honoring your design see how awesome that is when we have that full spectrum and another cool thing you can do is just have a slanted like, um, again, inhuman something to the eye, because they're the focal point. And I'll just illuminate that. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Um, and then we had, it's like a cough, but I needed a cough in the middle of my cough. What? Anyway, um, I'm going to try to throw a little bit more saturation this way. Just see how much I can get away with. <laughs> All 
All right, and then I'm gonna get the yellow just to reunify all of these values so that it's still complementary to the um, to the purple that we put everywhere. And then get pure yellow, almost greenish yellow, and put it just on the outskirts. Oops, not with color mode. Just on the outsides of the irises, just because it's cool to apply different variations in the in the pupils. You're working, I mean, you submitted a really low uh, resolution, and I'm working with a really low resolution, so there's so much more detail you could pull off. And there's the lash line that could either be caught, you know, with light, or it could be caught with shadow. Really your choice. <clears throat> Look at how much power we have in the eyebrows right now. I can just throw in a couple of loose strands with a large brush. Don't be corny with your with your thin little hairlines or hair wisps. You know they don't really do much for you at the end. Always assume that it's a bit of the texture's organic pattern, the actual texture shining through a layer of blur. That's every texture is like that. Every texture you will ever paint. And then I'm just blurring the base of every brush stroke and carrying that up. Okay, so now for that wild shit, okay? So this is my favorite part because it's the part of the light that I have to delay. So we know we, we have a lot here that we don't want to lose. So, um, ah, son of a bitch, don't you dare freeze on me. Don't you fucking dare freeze on me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> it's okay. I think it just did it. Yeah, I screenshot. Um it's okay. I still have the majority of the changes, and I can always enlarge it. But I'm going to see what the hell. That's what happens. For some reason, it crashes on me. Uh, if I, if, if I um, end it, it's. I think it's going to do a recovered for me, but let's see. I'm sure, I'm sure it's, um, alt tab helps sometimes. Um, I think it's going to recover it, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it did. I just don't know when, how much work we lost. Uh, not that much. I think it's just the hair texture, which I can just throw in. think we lost that much anyway because Photoshop got excited because I was like yeah let's do this sh the fun shit now and Photoshop was like mm, and it just crashed <laughs> so let's get back to it um oops uh oops that's rise delete yeah I just wanted that uh, it's just a quick little addition of the hair texture oops wherever we lost it Yeah, that's nothing. We didn't lose that much. We're good. Everything's good. All is well. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. So, I'm going to save real quick. Um, so what we're going to do now is that really crazy lighting stuff, okay? Where we're respecting the silhouette. I'm going to duplicate the layer, and I'm going to get soft brush using the moon volume light, that full light, and I'm just going to splash it everywhere, okay? So, lower that. And it's just going to bleed everywhere, okay? I'm using a textured soft brush just to so things don't look corny or, or annoying or airbrush or cheap or, you know, all that stuff. 
and I'm going to first of all delete away anything that is not the, the, the character. Try to use dot, uh, the, the blocking brush because that will um, not allow that airbrush look to ugly. The airbrush look is ugly. Do not allow it to eat up your painting. So I'll show you that awesome trick and what it did to your painting. Look at that. Looks like a room is filled with light. Right? It looks like there is a space. There's space behind her. We've 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 occupied the space around her. We need to be a little bit more uh, classy with it though, so we don't want it to eat up the corners of the painting. Yeah, the textured soft brush is awesome. I just feel like it always, t even if I use a textured edge edging brush um, or blocking brush, I, no matter how hard I, you know, try to preserve sharpen or unsharp mask or 100% opacity, turning off transfer just to allow some texture through, I bring in soft brush and it eats up all my texture. So I put in texture in soft brush. That way it kind of still gives back as it takes away from texture. All right, so... So, so fundamentally, if I were to diagram what I just did, we have an object. Everybody watch closely, please. By the way, if you guys hand in notes to the community, you get my brush sets for free as a reward. So all you note takers, hand in your notes, submit them to the community. People will benefit from them. Submit them everywhere. Right? And we have an object. That was a really shitty diagram. We have object one and an object in between. And if these are two, you know, they've been adjusted, but hardly in for the sake of depth. And we covered depth last class. If you don't know what that is, just look at the history. We have these two objects. When we put in some kind of ambient object, either it's um, fog or ambient light, in between them, suddenly there's a z-axis. Suddenly there's space. Suddenly one object is behind the other. That's atmospheric perspective as well as showing the volume of the room, filling the room up with something. i delete these guys right here. All right. And not just that, we still have to respect the silhouette. So, darken layer. The average shadow color of the scene, that's basically her bra color, any shadow nearby, is going to be thrown over everything again just to uncheesify or unsplotch or, you know, just to even out everything. And we're using darkened layer on purpose. We can use lightened layer on some areas that you've over textured for no reason. They're just like really overdone. And you guys should prepare to laugh because that's what I'm saying when I, when I say the, um, the expression was cheesy because just like, remember guys, do you remember? <laughs> Do you guys remember? This is when you guys always talk about this one. The critique hour with that girl whose expression looked like her nipples were getting twisted. And that was like permanently the character whose nipples were getting twisted. And everyone started mocking, you know, oh, that's the character whose nipples were getting twisted. Do you guys remember that? Some of you guys probably remember that. Um, so it's going to look like that. But that's what I'm saying. That's the effect of corny expression. You guys got to be really classy with your expressions. Be a little bit more particular, be a little bit more, um, uh, uh, what's the term really? What's just be a little bit more picky. And if you don't know what bad acting looks like, I mean, there's a shit ton of bad movies on Netflix. Just, just what is it about them that makes them feel so icky? And that's mostly the expressions. These actors are, have, have no subtlety to their expression, no layering, no, uh, you know, an internal monologue. It's kind of just external expression. All right, so turn them both off. See how flat it looks? Even after all my edits, there's still a flatness to it. <laughs> so you're saying don't be afraid to twist nipples. <laughs> untwist the nipples is what I'm saying. Don't be afraid to untwist the nipples. And then after, with those two edits, see, full of volume. And if, if you just wanted the, the light, that was enough too. And we can duplicate this light layer um, and then just redelete at the edges. Remember, you, you want the corners of your of your illustration to be framed. You don't want the eyes to, 
to remember that you don't want to give a, the viewer a, a one-way ticket out of your painting you want to just trap them in there so those you know last little topical little wisps of illumination I might not even do it with that brush I've changed my dodge brush to like my pencil brush and it's gonna be tricky because it's just like one shot to kind of bring in these really wispy points of illumination just on the tip of the nose where the light catches and it's the same deal we go back and we delete away what we don't need and just zooming out just to make sure I'm not undermining anything a little bit more outline here just because we have a lot of mass at the top edge of the painting we don't want to do that and from here from this point in the painting I feel like we don't have enough of a washing of light around her not enough of a halo see how she comes out a little bit and let's just smudge the lower half of the painting and then again just around the edges just here for the fabric um, I'm going to clean up this little mess remember soft brush is a it will betray you really quickly it's one of the more dangerous tools to use And then we have this really, really cool thing that we can do, which is what I showed you guys last time. Um, so I kept this darkened layer intact because we might need it. We're going to use that evil purpley color, that magical color, and just very, very easily, like just general ambience, no major cast shadows, just a general ambient presence. Mask by mask, I'm just going to go through it and apply it to everything using an edging brush, so my, just my blocking brush. So we're going to start off with the largest objects that could be getting that ambient secondary. And then I'll just run it through blur, blur layer just to get it to blur because of, of the texture of light is soft. Just like the texture of rock is, is geometric, is hard, just like the texture of fur is that fuzzy texture, the texture of light is soft, meaning blur tool is your friend when you're trying to create the feeling that the light is natural. Right, just a little bit, it's not going to eat up the painting. It's just coming from one particular angle. You might not even get every single part, it might be coming from below, just, you know, whatever it might be nothing too extreme, nothing directly from the side, like it's super cheesy, from a low angle is a little bit more classy, so it's not getting her shoulders, it's getting some of the breast just on the side, just the side of the torso really, and then the arm will cast a shadow, kind of get in the way, sort of, right, see that beautiful ambient touch, <clears throat> so it's mostly the bottom of the chin, Maybe the bottom of the nose. Her nose is super cute. So this is just going to make it like kind of look cuter. And then just a little bit under the brow. Which is a spot you guys forget a lot when it comes to ambient light. Yeah, kind of like Evelyn. Is this, is this supposed to be Evelyn? From League? I don't know. I'm, I don't really keep up with all of the silly little <coughs> skins they make for every friggin' character instead of improving the game. Alright, so you see how I uh, blurred everything? That really helped it feel like light. Light has a texture to it. Okay, and then 
and then we're done. Um, there is more you can do to the uh, expression. There's, eh, there is more. Um, there is a wider smile with a closed mouth, which let me try to get the, which is a bit more freaky, a little bit more demonic. With open mouth is even more demonic. If you want it to read as less demonic and more like actual just expression, you can close the mouth. But if it's a you know important for you to keep it vampire, vampire to read as vampire, then um, then you can keep it. And then for the blood, you know you don't really need to go crazy with the blood here. Why is where's my pen pressure now? Now where's my pen pressure? Come on. Son of a bitch. Um, I didn't do anything to uh, picture viewers. The wind tab shouldn't have crashed or anything. It'll be back. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, sometimes that happens. Some weird u Windows thing. So I'm just going to smudge some stuff just to clean up. I've never had any issues with, um, I've never had as many issues with pen pressure because of the tablet as I did with Wacom, so 100% uh, of the time this, the, 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 some weird Windows thing running in the background crashes the pen pressure and, and this, this weird thing. When I open a picture, play, and then I'll just like lose pen pressure and then because it's 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 windows really and then I turn it off and my pen pressure should come back in like a second should <laughs> there we go so it's always something to do with when so I still recommend the XP pen because it's it's like I, I know exactly what's happening whereas other tablets you have no fucking clue why your pen pressure dropped so I'll always recommend XP Pen. And I'm, uh, yeah, they did sponsor a video, but that's not why I'm recommending. I'm recommending because the product is actually fucking awesome, and it's only $100. And 200 I mean, $300, $800 tablets I've used, $2,000 tablets I've used, and they've all had pen pressure shit. I can't track down. Weird pen pressure stuff, too. I guess the more simple the product, the, the, the more dependable it is, especially with something as delicate as the, I don't know, the mechanics of pen pressure. <clears throat> so I'm just cleaning up here and I didn't really adjust the perspective that much she is tilting her head just slightly but um, for, for me to really tilt her head uh, I would have to get into liquefy and change the horizontal and vertical lines to, to you know, less forehead more chin uh, completely placing the head up there hiding the hair behind, like that, that would be a more, and then I keep adjusting the chin so that we're seeing the underside of the chin. Eventually you don't just see a silhouette of the chin. So like, I just want to show you the, the benefits of having her head tilt up, but I don't feel like we need it at the moment, but it would be cool if we had it. Um, another thing that's really good for a female character is the neckline, super, super important. I know you guys are just dying to see the before. Some of you already have the before draft open community. Don't do that. <laughs> You're killing the showmanship over here. You son of a bitch. You didn't do it. All right. So you might want to show some of that neckline just behind. Just some light coming through. Just like that, just really simple. Okay. And uh, I'll probably blur it by the hairline. Filter, blur, gosh, and blur. Something's happening in the background that is crashing my Photoshop, and I have no fucking clue what it is. Quit Skype. I have mad RAM, I have like intense RAM. 
I have like overkill RAM just so this shit doesn't happen to me. Um, filter. It's probably the filters. Blur. Gaussian blur. And I'm just. Oh, come on. What the? Oh. Why am I not doing this right? What's happening over here? Select before. Filter, blur, gosh, and blur. Do you guys ever, do you guys ever just, uh, just, just don't want to see the before? <laughs> there are some of you that just refuse. No, you have to see the before. Don't forget to flip. Yes, absolutely. Let's flip. I would say there's some, a couple of little weird things with the arm sizes, but I, I don't want to talk about anatomy. Maybe this side of the hair needs to be a little bit darker. And the base is maybe just a bit of... But I don't want to bring in too much, but just a shadow for each curl, I would say. That's as much shadow as I want to bring in. Yeah, but that, we really did need that highlight here. Really helped. Without it, we kind of have just like a big splotch. Just a little bit of light. But yeah, the, 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 the arm, <clears throat> a lot of the, of the size of the arm just has to do with that weird overlap over the boobs. So someone who doesn't have boobs really doesn't understand how arms don't just sit on top of boobs. The boobs get in the way. And so the arm adjusts or the boobs get out of the way and kind of just jumble up, which is good for the pinup. So, blur tool. Save. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to just blur the outsides of the canvas really quickly. Um, it's going to help us frame the canvas back. Filter. Uh, blur, gosh, and blur, and it's gonna just refocus everything back to the character. Really slight blur, but it's made the background feel further away. And if you want even more blur in the background, you may do so, even to the point where it's just abstract almost. Really don't need that much information, um, but it's your choice. The degree of blur is like so wide your radius is so wide for that because you can actually change that on a camera so you can add more or less blur and it just looks like the object is far away do you guys remember where we studied that last class I'm just gonna keep pushing the blur and she's gonna look closer to us she looks like she's right here right and this is where we were before so have at it it's really up to you it's your taste not this this is super cheesy <laughs> Um, so something in between, I think, is just hella cool. Alright, last little change is just because they're in, in the way, in my eye, um, just this discontinuation here between hair strand and highlight, and then I'll show you guys the before. Right. So, it's okay if it, if it elicits a laugh, because that's what you were, that's the point, is that when we had the Three Stooges, when we had you know, silly physical comedy, it was like that, you know, oh, smack the head, weird sound, smack the head on the other guy, the other guy makes the shocked face, his shock face is like really silly, that's, we're watching physical comedy when you're literally drawing, Ooh, oh my god, oh what, it's like really cheesy acting, do you guys remember that stuff from back then, you know, it's like Looney Tunes, just showing how the light kind of sneaks into that little curl here. Maybe a bit more of a band on her forehead. Not that much is too right. Okay. Um, maybe less light on the inside of the cheek. Just like that. So it's just the nose. <coughs> Smudge brush is your friend. 
all my smudge brushes, all my brushes are on my website, so you guys can head over there and get them all. Um, and then lighten, just to clean up that weird outline you had. And I kind of lost that blood that you had before. It's really cheesy to have blood like this. Everybody fucking does it. It's cool to have like an actual smear of blood on the side or something or just just a little bit of blood. <laughs> Is she a messy eater? Like, what's going on? Like, why do you guys always have to have a little trickle of blood? It's the cheesiest you should have ever seen. It's like, oh, I'm so elegant. I suck blood, but, you know, I, I cleaned up everywhere else, but except for this little trickle. It's super cheesy. It's overdone. Bad art direction if anybody forces you or asks you to put it in. It's just way too cheesy. So you see, there's a lot, not a lot of sharpness. There's a lot more I could do, but just because for the sake of time, I'm not going to get into all the beauty that is portraiture. I think we covered a lot already. See what I just did? Like bringing the eyebrow down this way has made her a little less human. And then remember, always don't just leave eyebrows unsmudged. Smudge them in. Have a nice intro of like to the eyebrow through a smudge, a transition of smudge. And um, remember, I'm always looking at my navigator. My eyes are on my navigator to make all these major decisions. <clears throat> There's one more thing that I want to do. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe two more things. First of all, this, uh, this shoulder looks like it's dislocated. So I'm just going to give her that little flirtatious um, shoulder. Like, ooh, <laughs> I just killed you. <laughs> That's a stupid thing. <laughs> That these bitches do when they kill kill people. Alright. And I would like to, because of this is my taste, this is what I want to do. It's not necessarily what you have to do. Is I just want to um I'm sorry I'm not looking at the com I really want to look at that. I love what you guys say. But I gotta hurry up. Is I just want more glow around her. I want that Hollywood glow just because she's got that Hollywood hair. You know, I just feel like it'll add more. Just that, uh, what's her? Blur, gosh, I just don't want too much texture out. Just because it'll complete the, um, the silhouette as well. But you don't have to have it. It's like moonlight. It's like really strong moonlight. And I might, I might, if I f think it's necessary, just throw a quick little cash shadow. I mean, it's not really accurate, but it's just going to make her more of a valid, you know, interrupter a little bit. Typically, uh, like technically, I mean, it's supposed to be just surrounding her. I, I would take my, if this was my painting, I would take my time. <coughs> oh, and I painted it on the blur layer, apparently, so. That's made the background a little more distant. Alrighty. Tiny little... Sorry, but you're like, oh, hurry up, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, I, I will in a second. I just want to make sure that we haven't lost detail. Because I feel like we lost this. You guys notice we lost some hair strands. Friendly fire. All right. Are right, you guys ready? Oh, right, we don't even have the full before. Shit. <laughs> okay, because we crashed. Um, so let me find the before. Uh, it is going to be in downloads, I believe, because it was way in the history. Um, Might have been. Might have been. No. Before. You had a great scene. It, was, it just it looks like a league splash. You know, it looks like a close-up into a multi-character league splash setup. Right, the expression suits the mood. <clears throat> and 
and then we've got the blur in the background, the space that the light filled in the background. <laughs> this, I didn't finish this, whoopsie, my bad. Didn't really fix the boobies. Because now it's just eating up the canvas, as you can tell. It's supposed to be nice and dark and out of the way. <clears throat> All right, so we decided on the mood from the uh, light source. Silhouette, it's a dark scene. This girl just killed a man. She's smiling like, oopsie. <laughs> and another thing you can do, which is what they actually did in those Disney scenes, is to just get that on soft brush, low opacity, and just build like a a glow back in that yellow on the eyes but honestly I mean you can change it into any color that you like we can take it back to that reddish pink that's actually really great a lot more evil or you can just keep that classic yellow which I'm a fan of but you can keep the colors in one scheme and uh, it'll still look good or you can do a combination of the two which is just the yellow eye and then the red undertone or overtone <coughs> either way she actually looks evil she feels evil she feels scary here it's just a silly caricature it's an emoji literally what you drew. All right. Human emotion. So this is what that Scott McCloud book does. Understanding comics is what it's called. Um, please go read it. Um, he was saying that the more, the less realism you have, the more universal the expression. This is universe. The more, the less, uni less rep <laughs> more universal the anatomy, the more universal the expression. What the fuck am I saying? The more realism you have, the less universal the expression. Is that what I said? So if you have more universal um, expression, you have less detail, less human, rep like less representational realism, less anatomy. We have more, we have plenty of representational anatomy here. We have torsos, we have shoulders, we have symmetry lines, we have spines, we have necks. This is no longer a universal representation of an emotion. Therefore, you cannot use a boiled down single ingredient expression. You have to uh, apply that multifaceted mechanics of the face and, and bring in layers and layers of expression, layers and layers of psychology. She is satisfied. She's got those bedroom eyes, but she's also extremely unhinged. So we've got this, this, this sense of evil, the sense of a smile that only seems to curl at the ends, but the rest of the mouth is kind of still almost a snout. We've got these almost, like, we've got evil shapage to the eyebrows. These are some evil eyebrows, Cruella de Vil eyebrows. Um, we don't have a lot of nice curves. We have a lot of sharp edges. Look, look, her ears are sharp. Her ears represent that sharpness. Um, speaking of the ears, which I usually always forget. I might use a little bit of a of a light just at the top, just because they are carrying a lot of that evil tone. Just a small light. <clears throat> all right. So if you're gonna use all this anatomy and give me a five-year-old's caricature emoji face, people are gonna laugh. Period. That's the rule. Learn, research a little bit. The human body, the human face is full of nuance. It's full of detail, multi-layered. Um, uh, uh, you know, multi many emotions can be expressed at the same time. Anger and happiness can be expressed at the same time, believe it or not. And a good actor knows the balance. Okay? Both by Scott McCloud. Yeah, there's two books. Understanding Comics is the first, Making Comics is the second. Really recommend reading them. 
Um, uh, Esther Back, if we're subbed to the Patreon, do we get the brushes that are on your site? You get the brushes that I used for each painting um, that I that I submit. So if I submit personal art, any pa any brush I used for that painting, you get them. But if you wrote some notes today and you won the um, the the brush reward, you can choose whatever brush set you want. If they're really good notes, I give you the entire set. <clears throat> Less realism equals more universal uh, representation. Exactly. Um, any questions at all? <laughs> Less background contrast looks good. Yeah. Um, try to use yourself as reference to. Yep. Um, that's why I'm saying when you become an illustrator, there's so much you're responsible for. You have to study cinema and good framing. You have to study lighting and photography. You have to study uh, uh, acting. You have to study costume design. So when you're an artist, you're an illustrator, you're exposing yourself to many schools of thought and you have to be a good actor. Luckily, a lot of us are natural you know, natural parrots. We, we naturally do voices. We're naturally entertainers. That's a big thing about being artists. Usually if an artist is, an, you know, they're good at art, they're usually good at music on the side or acting or dancing or something. So there's a bit more to it than just self-expression through sketching. There's this is self, if you're going to be an evil character, you're going to empathize, you're just going to be like, for instance, I'm just talking about myself, I love impressions, you guys have been there, you guys have heard of my accents, so that's where I would, you know, inherit that, but also just watching movies and just seeing what, movie, what actors do is another way to learn if you haven't really gotten into that. Um, I'm actor and painter. Will you do another critique hour on line art anytime soon? Probably not a critique hour, but maybe a tutorial, if I get into it. Any questions? Um, if you add a sabrak, I you will get. I'll, I will see the question. Uh, hey, do you know that trick? I guess where you can have a second window with the flipped image, so you don't have to flip all the time. You mean do I know how to do it? You mean just having a window open? Why not just flip? I mean, unless that's what something that you want. Um, and then. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, her hand seems big, but it seems like her body is just athletic. That's how I'm reading it, really. Um, let me see if there's any questions at Estabrax anywhere up to the top. I try to get them all. Um, Estabrax, do you mind being tagged if it's not asking for critique? Oh, I don't mind being tagged on social media. I just, you know, when you guys message me on social media with for full critique, I feel bad saying no, first of all. I try to direct you to the Reddit. It's not that I'm throwing you at the Reddit. I'm literally telling you where to go to get an actual critique from me. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it's, it's free resource at the moment. Um, so that you guys should take advantage of that. Anyway. Thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate it. I really like the red. Um, and I will post this uh, just so you guys can see the... Um, one second. View layer saturation. No. I like the red. Just so you guys can see the before and after on Facebook and Instagram if I get the permission of the artist. Um, and... Uh, if you guys learn something today and you want to support, you want to give back, go to Patreon. If you join as a watcher, just a dollar watcher, that's $12 a year, you can give back to the community at like an almost untraceable amount. And it keeps the community going. Um, if you guys want any of the brushes you saw from the textured soft brush to the edge brush to the smudge brush, you guys can get it on my store along with Portrait Studio. If you had trouble, I really wanted to use Portrait Studio to pose today because there was a pose problem here. Um, I just didn't have time to get into that because it's already 6.30. <clears throat> um, but if you would like to know what Portrait Studio is all about, it's all over my channel on YouTube. If you want to join us uh, for any more critique hours, I try to post it on Facebook and Twitter uh, announcements, but it's every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And that's it really for announcements community challenge book cover challenge it's like a challenge I send out to the community members and they they draw as if they're being hired for that commission 
This is all stuff you can put on your portfolio, and then I critique it in one big theme, um, themed critique hour. All your submissions, I try to critique them all <clears throat> in a class just like this one. Uh, we just talk about book covers, designing, where to put your where to put your title, how to show more with less. Um, and yes, 100% a book is judged by its cover all the time. Um, anyone, anyone worth their salt in publishing knows that. Um, and uh, we just try to talk about all of that. And as an illustrator as well, the book cover as an illustration, not just as like a graphic print or like a, you know, like some kind of, uh, you know, just text-based print ty type of illustrate like book cover. It's like a drawing book cover, not that just title stuff. Um, so we talk a lot about light environment, um, line of sight, uh, how to guide the eye, how to keep enough breathing room for titles and author name. So that is coming up in the community as well. Thank you everyone for coming. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Look out for the community challenge on Reddit. Go join it at Thanks guys. Bye.